Hi, I'm Stephanie Hutchins, author of Transformation After Trauma, Embracing Post-Traumatic Growth, and owner of Seratness Life. And I'm coming on today to address a question I've been receiving quite a bit lately, actually. And um, it's the question, will I ever forget my trauma? And I know that when people ask me this, that they're wanting so desperately for me to say, yes, you know, yes, there will come a day where you won't ever remember, but I'm unable to give them that answer because the reality is, is that we'll never forget our trauma. Um, and if you're not, you know, familiar with a bit of my background um, for many um, years in my professional life. I was a professor, um, a college professor, and I taught for most of those years anatomy and physiology. And so, and I taught courses um, specifically on the brain. And I know that our brains will never allow us to forget our most painful experiences because our brain always wants to be on guard for similar pain that we might encounter in the future so we can avoid it. So our brain will, will never allow us to let it go. And so while that might feel very disheartening and devastating to know, I think you first have to know that this is the way it's going to be. And if this is the way it's going to be, well, how do you handle that going forward? And again, if you're not familiar with my story, I have an extensive um, trauma history and um, both my book and my coaching practice are focused on working with individuals who have experienced trauma and really reclaiming their life and figuring it a out a way to move forward and not only just survive after their trauma, but really thrive afterward. And so if, if we're never going to be able to forget our trauma, then we have to figure out a way to navigate our life knowing that some of the most painful experiences that we've ever in, ever endured will always be a part of us and and how to, again how do we handle that and how do we handle the memories when they resurface and so um, I I am diagnosed with I have been diagnosed with uh, post-traumatic stress disorder uh, PTSD and so um, one thing that I do experience from time to time is uh, flashbacks and so and they come at really random times sometimes like I may be um, doing work. So I may be on the computer doing something completely unrelated to my trauma and bam, I'm like hit with a memory, like a visual memory um, and sensations that I experienced from one of the times that I was violated. Um, or I may be walking, you know, I might be going for a walk, breathing in the fresh air and all of a sudden, bam, memories hit me. And there's no rhyme or reason sometimes when, when these memories come on. And so um, I have, it took me a long time to figure out, you know, what do I do when I get hit with um, these memories that make me feel like I'm immersed, you know, in the experience again, and or even when uh, the memory, just a, um, just a memory comes up. And so so I want to share with you some of the things that I've done to navigate um, these painful memories and, and when it really revisits me um, and to give you ideas of how you can um, handle your own painful memories um, when they come up so they don't they don't debilitate you. You know, for years, I would be sidelined. You know, if a memory came up about my past, I'd be like out of commission for days or weeks or months sometime, like being back in that painful experience. And so, you know, today when these memories come up, I only get sidelined for brief moments, okay? If it's quite severe, maybe a few hours, but again, I found ways to navigate um, these things. So, um, so because many times these memories come on very unexpectedly, um, I utilize um, what I've learned from my meditation practices to just come back to my point of focus. So if you've read my first book, um, 
transformation after trauma, you'll know that I, I dedicate a significant portion of my book to meditation um, because it has been very critical um, in my healing journey particularly with dealing with these painful memories. See, all meditations, what they have in common is they're training your mind to come back to a single point of focus. And every single time your mind starts to wander, your practice, meditation practice, is all about bringing you back time and time again to that single point of focus. And, and many people say, well, I'm no good at meditating because they're always getting off track, but they don't understand that's the point of meditation. This is what our minds do. Our minds are always fluttering around to different memories, and sometimes they're happy and sometimes they're painful. And sometimes they're neutral. But, um, but if you're trying to work or if you're on a walk or you're in a conversation with somebody, you don't want to be thinking, you know, um, about other things, particularly your trauma. And so what I have done and what I encourage you to try yourself is the next time you experience an intrusive memory, um, from your past to work on coming back to your single point of focus. So if it's your work, coming back. Okay, this is my point of focus, coming back. If it's your walk, um, and I keep looking this way because I'm looking out at my windows and I see, you know, the road I'm typically walking on and, and just focusing on coming back to the one step in front of you. Um, it may be helpful to take a deep breath you know, I do that a lot myself, particularly if I'm working, um, I, I will breathe deep into my belly um, and focus for like a minute on my breathing and then keep on focusing on coming back to my work. Um, and, and I may have to take some more breaths. And if, if the memory was particularly severe, um, sometimes I get up and walk away um, for a few minutes. I may play a song that gets me out of that headspace that will um, divert my attention to something else so I can come back to my point of focus. When I'm walking, um, you know, I can't, you know, many times just stop. Um, depending on where I'm at, I've, I've got to keep going. And so, um, so I will, I will, focus on immersing myself in the sensations around me. So the temperature of the air, the sounds, the sights, like I, I love looking at birds flying. Um, I've always loved looking at birds flying. They, um, they symbolize to me an immense sense of freedom. And so, um, and I also love looking at how leaves move in the wind. And so when I'm walking and these memories come up, um, I try to just bring myself back to what I was experiencing prior um, to the intrusive memories. And that was being immersed in the outdoors. Um, and so coming back again to my point of focus, you know, maybe focusing on one step in front of me or again, immersing myself in the sensations around me. Um, some other things I do. So sometimes when my memories come up, it makes sense. Like if I'm watching a movie, um, sometimes TV shows, but you know, I don't really watch a lot of TV. I, um, when I do watch TV, it's usually a movie. Um, if there's an, un, like if I didn't realize there was going to be certain scenes in it, um, I can have a lot of trouble. So most of my traumas involve um, sexual violence. And so I am extremely um, sensitive to um, sexual violations happening to other people, um, even on the TV, you know, so um, it'll send me right back every time. So if I'm watching something that has a scene that I wasn't expecting, um, usually I'm watching with people I know and I'll have to say, you know, mute the TV and I've got to, I got to go into another room. Don't start it until I'm in another room. Because if I even hear the sounds of the person being violated and they're pleading, you know, pleading for the person to stop, sends me 
right back. And so, and I like ruminate over these thoughts that then comes into my dreams at night. So I just know that um, movies um, and these kinds of scenes are very triggering for me. And so what I've done is um, when I am on my own um, or I'm with a close friend and, um, you know, we're searching for a movie to watch, I always ask Google ahead of time if there are rape scenes in the movie. And I just don't watch them. If there are, I just will not watch the movie. It doesn't matter how great it is. I don't care. Um, I know for self-preservation purposes, I can't do it. Um, because it, other people, watching other people be violated will actually come into my flashbacks. Like sometimes my flashbacks don't even involve just me. It's, it's scenes of other people being violated. And so I just, I know this about myself. And so I say all of this to you because I encourage you to not only come up with ways to handle um, memories that revisit you um, when they're unexpected, but also find out ways to prevent being re-triggered. Now that you're not going to be able to do this completely. I mean, there's always going to be things and that people will say or do and experiences you're going to have that will cause you to think about painful experiences you've had. But what I, I encourage you to do is try to evaluate um, ways that you can minimize your exposure to possible triggers. Okay. And, and, and all of our triggers may be different because our traumas may be different. And so um, I, I encourage you to just increase your level of awareness and um, and, and again, sometimes you may have absolutely no idea of why you're being triggered. Um, you know, if you do have post-traumatic stress disorder, um, it means your, your nervous system is on high alert and it's extremely overvigilant looking for danger. And I also struggle with severe anxiety as well. And so when I start going down you know, that rabbit hole and thinking about, um, you know, painful experience, I, I start having, you know, my heart palpitations start going and I can feel my mind racing. And so, um, and sometimes it, again, doesn't make sense. But what I have done is even if I can't make sense of the trigger, I have, fig I know when the sensations are coming on in my body. And I know when I have to start practicing some self-care to get myself under control. And so I, I have become extremely aware of the sensations. And so that's another th practice I'll encourage you to do is to recognize what sensations are happening in your body, what changes are happening in your body when you start to feel these memories come on. Because many times our body will express signs of stress before we are even conscious, consciously aware that we're under stress. And so um, when I can feel those heart palpitations going and that's where I know with me, my signs are my heart racing and I can feel tightness in my upper back in my lower back just starts to tighten up the knots. And so um, again, my first go-to is breathing, um, particularly into my belly and doing very slow, deep breaths and trying to have my exhale be longer than my inhale. Um, these are, are things that can help deactivate the stress response um, or try to override it. And, um, and then walking, just getting up and moving from the situation. And, um, and so it may be going on a sharp walk. It may be, um, I've recently become big into puzzles and, um, and it's been a beautiful um, way to, to um, focus on something else. And, and puzzles actually have tremendous amounts of, of benefits for like improving our memory and, um, and problem solving skills and stress reduction. And so um, I now have always a puzzle going. Um, and so whenever I'm feeling, cause I do all of my work from home. And so, um, and I live in upstate New York, so it's very cold. So sometimes I don't necessarily wanna go outside for a walk. So I have a puzzle going. So if I'm needing a diversion, I'll start going and working on a, part of the puzzle and um and it helps me um to just get off um that uh 
that thought process I'm on that's not very useful. And again, other times I'll use music. I love to dance um, and get myself moving. Um, but I think something else that's important to practice is that I think it's important for you to recognize every time a painful memory comes up and that you were able to experience it maybe even briefly, but it didn't derail you. So like, I think it's really empowering to see that we can control these memories. Like, even though we can't stop them from ever coming back, we can find ways to like regain control over ourselves when they revisit us. And so I like to always, um, in many ways, commend myself over time for how I've found ways um, to divert my attention or just see, to remind myself that I'm okay, that these memories can come up and I'm okay, you know? Um, and I think the other thing I'll, I'll say is that, um, I know for myself and I know for many of my clients and, and followers um, that sleep is, is sometimes difficult for them, um, particularly with intrusive thoughts. And, and that can be particularly problematic because if we don't get sufficient amounts of sleep, then that affects all other aspects of our life. Of course, it can um, affect our, our health. It can um, increase our susceptibility to illness. It can increase our stress levels. It can make it more difficult for us to focus. So when our um, painful memories revisit us when we're still at night or we wake up with um, really um, intense bad dreams from them, um, that can be uh, difficult. And so um, I encourage you um, to try out. And again, what works for me may not work for you. So sample different things, but find ways that you can get yourself, you know, back on track. In this case, back in sleeping mode when painful memories revisit you. And so some things that um, I have found um, particularly helpful is um, I have always like um, in my DVD, I, I have a TV in my room and I know that's highly debatable of having a TV in the bedroom and all these kinds of things. But for me, um, just sometimes my intrusive thoughts just won't let me be. And so what I do is I have um, in my DVD player, you can also do it with like a smart TV and pull up, you know, one of your movie watching apps. And I encourage you to not, if you're trying to sleep, to not put something on that you've never seen before. Because if it's super interesting to you, well, you're not going to want to go back to sleep. You're going to want to keep your attention on what you're watching. And so what I do is I go towards TV shows and movies that I've seen many times, I know really well, and, um, and, and they don't trigger me in any kind of way. So I can have it as noise in the background and, um, and have it be able to be something that will be interesting enough where I'll allow my attention to be diverted to it, um, but I won't be fully immersed in it so much that I won't be able to get back to sleep or get to sleep. Another thing I do is um, I, so again, I, I talk about it all the time, um, is that I am a huge fan of audiobooks and I have hundreds of them on my phone. And so what I'll do as well is I have um, audiobooks I particularly like to listen to when I'm sleeping, uh, ones um, that are um, I typically listen to mostly nonfiction books and mostly personal development kind of stuff, but there are some books that I like that are told in the form of a parable, so a story. And, um, and so the, the, I like, it's almost like a bedtime story. And so some of my favorites to listen to, um, going to sleep at night, um, is like the richest man in Babylon and, um, the instant millionaire and the 12 pillars. Um, um, and uh, it's a story um, of um, some of Jim Rohn's most commonly used quotes. And so um, why I like all of these is if you try them for yourself, you'll hear the voice. The voice is much, very much a storytelling voice. It's very, um, it's just nice. And it's, it's enough for me to divert my attention, but I also feel really good about the content that's coming in. You know, that it's, it's good that 
it's actually like reinforcing, um, you know, practices in my life that I, I want to embrace. And so again, just ideas that have worked for me and, um, and, and if what you're doing right now is not working, then try something else, you know, and, um, and if that doesn't work, we'll just keep trying something else. And I think, um, it's just important not to give up and lose hope, um, and know that over time, you know, our, our memories can become less intrusive and we can figure out a way to get a hold of them when they visit us. So um, if you have any uh, questions, I'd be more than happy um, to answer them for you. Um, and thanks for listening. <laughs>